Barber College Success. Another wonderful episode. Thank you for coming. Brought to you by Craig Charles of Crown Cuts Academy, JC, Crown Cuts Academy, Bristol, and Craig's Crown Cuts, downtown Johnson City. Spread and love the JC way is the only way we know, but spread and love the Crown Cuts way is the top way. Today, we're going to have a wonderful episode. Banging episode. And my co-host himself. Am I Fields? Am I your barber on Instagram? Oh, yes, sir. Am I the man? <laughs> is that, I, I, don't, I, I, I said across from me on this side, but I'm just used to it. Like, I always well, sit over there. It almost seems like whenever I come in, I feel like I have to be having, like, assigned seats. I just, I know. I like it, but I, least, I'm used to it now. I'm almost used to it because I've never, I don't think I've ever sat anywhere else. I think, yeah, I think sat, you sat there. When we first yeah. started, you sat there. And I think I probably sat over there one time. I don't know. I don't remember. Man. It just seems like I come in now and I just gravitate towards one side. Yeah. I, and, and unless somebody's already in my chair down there. Yeah. Do you tell them? Do they just naturally sit there? No, people just naturally come in and fall in line. <clears throat> Maybe they watched it before. Probably. And they see like it's a science seats, which is good. Today, we're going to talk about apprenticeship. We're going to talk about going to school for the 1,500 hours. We're going to talk about the pros, the cons. Uh, what works for, for you, what um, benefits the student, what makes the overall experience the best thing to get them to maximize your effort in this industry. Because there's plenty of misconception because most states are now going, a lot of states, not going, but a lot of states have the apprenticeship program and a lot of students think that they have to get to the money right away, which is true. Everybody, they go to school for to get paid. To get capital, exactly. Yeah, to get capital. Well, but, people people look at people look at life so singularly. Like people think they have to have a job. Mm-hmm. It has to be a job. I need a job to make money so I can provide. And right. that is true. You need money to 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 support yourself. But at the same time, you want this is a career. This is a life changing thing. So you, you can, so you want to maximize your skill. You want to have the best skill suitable for you, well rounded when you get out of whatever discipline you're in, whether it's the apprentice or you're in school, so by the time you in a shop, you hit the you hit the ground running. Yeah, for sure. And I, I think I heard something about uh, Joe Biden. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong. Is supposed to be trying to pass a law saying that you certain uh, licensed professions now could could you don't have to have a license that you could obtain singularly through an apprenticeship. Right. Which which is which is okay, which is good, but I I still think there is going to be a need. For someone who who wants to get a serve from someone and and see that that person went through a, a protocol, went through a discipline to get it, opposed to just because you know some apprentices could be slack. You don't really get. It's oh. hard for someone to teach you while they're working. And I, and I, I, went, I mean, we both did the apprenticeship program, and, and for me, there's just so much that I didn't learn that I learned the wrong way of doing stuff that I'm now knowing now from you know, certain barber skills in particular, or even doing my taxes, things that were taken for granted that were just, you know, cut corners by that. But but to me, that was the right way because somebody was teaching me. Right. So in my mind, oh, this is the right way. And that's one of the problems with apprenticeship. You don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. So what do you think is the mindset for someone who will choose the apprentice route opposed to just going to the normal 1500 hours for barber cosmetology or 700 for aesthetics or nails or makeup what do you think is the thought process for me it was like i can tell you from my own perspective i don't want to speak through a third person but for me it was like i wanted to go to school Mm -hmm. at first because i felt like i would get that foundation and i and i didn't want to be dependent on anybody um because in apprenticeship you are almost at the mercy of the person who is apprenticing you which is one of the negatives to it but my perspective the way it came about to me why i made my decision was hey you can go to a shop now. You can learn all the skills that you learn in school, and we can omit all the other stuff because you don't really need that. Mm-hmm. And then you can make money while you do it, right. which is totally not the case. <laughs> if anything, I spent probably more money than I would have or wasted more money than I would have just going to school. Because everybody 
wants to get from point A to possible and mm-hmm. think that once you get from point A as quick as possible, you're ready to start making money and you jump into this industry. But there's so much little fine things, little tangible things that you can't grasp, you can't see, or you can't touch if you don't go to, to a regular 1500 our credit program. And 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 also you're missing out on that classical education that you know even though it's it's still you're learning stuff that you don't feel like you would use as a barber like mm-hmm. perms or section and stuff like that. That the industry is really becoming so immersed in itself. I, I took a um I took a class from I think his Instagram name was Joel the hair surgeon mm-hmm. and he said that the that he doesn't believe in and and just calling it men's or women's hair it's just haircuts because at this point you're a hairstylist. Exactly. At this point you know, you should be using your shears, your you, clippers, you all sh- that. You should be versing everything. Yeah. From your, your clippers, your shears, to your straight razor, to um, enhancements, to whatever, what, whatever it takes to accomplish your goal, accomplish your job. And it's a lot easier to fall back on those those teachings when you've had the basics of them than it is for you to try to pick them up later. For me, it's harder for me to pick it up later because I have so many bad habits or ways that I've that I've used to, to create, which sometimes that's how things are created, you know, like mm-hmm. I, things that I would normally done by myself or your technique, like the raking technique is something that is beneficial now. Right. And that you that you wouldn't have picked up if you had went and got a classical education, maybe or maybe you didn't. Right. But for sure. It's you know, you're missing out on stuff. And one thing that most people when I see them in the gym out in public, a lot of students, a lot of people who are trying to change careers, a lot of men. They're like, I want to be a barber, but I don't want to do that perm stuff. I don't want to sit there and cut women's hair. I just want to cut men's hair. Yeah. And initially, at first, I used to be like, ah, I wouldn't get into it because it'd be trying to convince them to do something that their mind is already made up to not They've do. already built a stereotype. Yeah, you already got a stigma up. So having that stigma, it's kind of hard to debunk that stigma. So then, but I was like, you don't have to stop. They have to let them know, hey, what is your objective for going into this industry? Well, I want to, I want to make money. So if you're trying to make money getting into this industry, what well, matter kind of color, hair, who, who, man, female, who you touching as yeah. long as you're making money. And the objective of a master barber is to turn down no services. So if you're a master barber, you have that title master barber, there shouldn't be no services that you can't do. Anything. Anything. Because some of the bad habits that I picked up, which I acquired later, was I wasn't being a master barber initially, through, through my apprenticeship program, I gained some valuable skills now. But I just gained the skills that those barbers was teaching at that time just to be a barber. And which sometimes it can be a good thing. Like I'm not bashing apprenticeship. Oh, no, because, no, no, no. Because no. a lot of those skills that you learn from somebody that is that will apprentice you, that they've probably done it hopefully for some years now, mm-hmm. and they can really – give you some game that and, and cut some kind of corner off what it took them to learn what they do. Oh, and, and that happened. And one of the skills that I acquired just being strictly as a barber, just be able to manipulate my clippers and cut hair like I'm using shares. Mm-hmm. Cause I had several people ask me, did you use shares on that hair? I'm like, no, I just use my clippers, but just not being able to use my shares initially and just being able to manipulate my clippers and do certain things and tricks with my clippers, angling, rake, and doing certain things that you you should do with some shares to make your life a little bit easier. Mm-hmm. I just did with my clippers. There's a quote that I remember. It's like a martial art quote. It says, do not fear the man who who threw a, a thousand punches one time. Fear the man that threw one punch a thousand times. Yeah. So you was a clipper man. You had to... <clears throat> Yeah, I, I made sure that I, I was able to do what I need to do with my clippers. But there's some parts in the head where you need to use your shears. You did, have to use your shears. Did you use your shears when you were an apprentice? Like did, or did you just, no. just clippers the most? No, clippers the whole time. Yeah. And the thing about an apprentice, it's hard for a barber who's cutting hair to sit and have time to train you. Yeah, for sure. It's hard. Because more often than not, he has his clients, he has to talk to his clients, he has to greet his clients, he has to do a consultation, things like that. He's hoping that you pick up while you're watching. And then if he's a business owner too, you know, he's answering his phone, he's greeting people yeah. at the doors. So some things, you have it has to be broken down to you where it's not. And more so an apprentice, I, I think you are expected to just see and do. Yeah, you're thrown to the fire almost. Yeah. yeah. 
And it works for some people, but I think you need a combination of both. There was a lot of times I wanted to quit. And, you know, some people probably would have quit. And I, I tell myself that anyways, I might be the only one. But I, there was times where I was like, you know, I might get out of this. I don't have no clients. Mm -hmm. I, I've watched. I've had a, I've seen the shot with a whole room full of people. I mean, packed to the gills. I mean, everybody cut, and there I am in my chair, just sitting there. Sweet. And and I've and you know the insecurity set in. It gets discouraging. At it time. does. It did. The insecurity set in. You know, the fact that I wasn't making money. You know, that guilt felt in, especially if you have a family. Right. And there was times I was like, I, I just quit. You know, but thankfully, thank God I didn't. You know, I'm still here. So. And then the discipline of teaching you some of the bookwork because you have to take the tests. You have to take the theory and the practical. So the shop owner who you're doing the apprentice under, they would have to reciprocate that training to you. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it's hard to reciprocate that training. You might you 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 can find some owners and then learn is something you have to do on your own too as well. Yeah. So if you up under a apprentice program while they're teaching you, you are supposed to have that discipline to go out there and do some learn your own for some students that's difficult and even like you know and sometimes you just forget like this right. uh, you know you got a CEO of a company he's got a doctor's degree he makes you know millions of dollars every year and he went to college and he took world g doesn't mean he's gonna know remember world geography when he goes you know even though right. he is successful so, so, so some things get lost in the sauce so and and again my mindset going in was like i'm gonna get this and for me more so of in boston the school was way outside of the city. How so, far? So I'd probably have to catch like two buses, a train and something else just to go out there and get the, to the school. I was like, that was, and so my decision was made a little bit easier when I could just go down the street, hop on one bus, 10 minute ride and go to the shop. And I think that's one of the benefits of an apprenticeship over, um, going to school maybe it's just the accessibility of it i think yeah and then making your own schedule yes almost to a degree that that's definitely a benefit of it um well whereas in school you gotta have so many hours and the school's open so many days that that that's one thing that i think did because you know i was working with family and you know the shop was in town i would have to drive to bristol and, mm -hmm. and you know put mileage on a vehicle and stuff like that that so that that was another thing that influenced my decision as well and and as i think of this right now I'm thinking of it like being homeschooled mm -hmm. and going to regular school. Some students thrive in homeschool. You're right. And some students struggle. I would have struggled. <laughs> and even like through the pandemic where a lot of kids, they it was a setback for a lot of kids to do virtual learning. But some kids it was easy. Some kids it was easy. They're like, Shoo, all I got to do is click, 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 and I'm gone. Bet. Right. I'm on it. You know what I mean? So yeah. I guess you have to kind of fine tune and find what works for you. But you have to do some research because both can work. Both can work, but you have to put some work in yourself. I think to have a good apprenticeship, you have to have somebody that knows where they lack in what they lack in. They have right. to know their strengths and weaknesses and maybe give you some kind of um, nurturing towards the other way. Maybe encourage you to go find out stuff on your own. And, and they do have to have some structure, too, within mm -hmm. the apprentice program. I think that would work, too. Yeah. Where you say, you know what, you come in the morning and from nine to ten, we're going to go over some things. Yeah. We're going to take an hour going over some of the basic things as far as taxes, as far as consultation, as far as certain things where you have the advantage of going to a classroom where the lesson for the day might just be marketing. The lesson for the day might be consultation. The lesson for the day where everybody is just doing role playing with, a, with an environment for learning is a little bit easier because everyone's doing it. Yeah. And there's no time limit opposed to. If you're in an apprenticeship program, you're like, you know, okay, my client's coming to 10, so we got to wrap this up. Mm -hmm. And then wrapping it up mean you might not be finished with the lesson and then the shop start getting full because you never know when another walk is going to come in and the owner might not have time to go back to that lesson. Yeah. And it, it, that I like, I think that, I, like I said, I wouldn't change anything. I think we talked about it before. I said, like, I would not change anything about what I did because thank God I am where I am right now. Right. But I, I, I will say that. I just I missed out on that classical education, man. That just, you know, having that Miss Dale to teach me, you know, how to run run a section through or stuff like that. Right. Stuff that I, I'm I'm hungry for now that right. I need to learn. And but I think that's good because I think missing out on certain parts of that aspect of it makes me hungry to where I am today. Right. To to want to learn and continue to grow. So, uh, I I think that 
no matter no matter whether you go to school or an apprenticeship, you still need to be willing to learn and to continue to learn no matter what. That's important because through an apprenticeship plan of continuing education where you could find some instructional programs online, you can go to hair shows yourself. 360. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, yeah. can, you can take a continuing education course at a hair show in Orlando and mm-hmm. the Bronner Brothers and IBS in New York. So, something to that aspect. But most, a lot of shop owners, you'd be surprised when barbers are working in the shop that they don't do continuing education, that they don't go to hair shows. But I could see why, because, I mean, you just... You get caught up in that daily grind of like you gotta support, and this kind of goes back to the beginning where I said like sometimes it's people you some people feel like it's just a job, mm-hmm. and and that's unfortunate because it could be so much more than that. But you know it's it's okay if you just want to sit behind a chair, grind it out, go home with your family. There's nothing wrong with that. I I applaud that. Right. But I mean, just know that at any given time, if you want to pick up what you got and carry it on and try something new, you could at any time. Yes. So, but, but the thing was too, with me, right. I also went back to school to pick it up. So I, I feel like I'm doing the same thing. <laughs> yeah. So I went back to school before I opened my, my school and to pick that up as well. Cause I wanted to get the, the, the education part. I wanted to get that part down pat. So I could be like, what is a student? What is the perspective of a student? Uh, where does the perspective from a student come from? How is it different? Because from day one, I knew when I go into the apprenticeship program, I knew from day one that I didn't get the theory. And that bothered me, knowing the intricate part of the origination of barber. Where is it from? What is this tool called? What's the proper term? What, you know, just the intricacies of it. Mm-hmm. And I remember that, like, and I went and got a textbook myself the year after I did the apprentice program. And I was like, trying to discipline myself to read that textbook was difficult. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I, and I tell people, honestly, and, and... He said, yeah, it was. I mean, when I, I had to do all my... As an apprentice, I had to do all my classes online. So you go back to the homeschool discipline, you know, especially growing up in public school like myself, where you were in class and somebody was like, here, read this, eat this, do this on work later. You know, that for me to, to, to have to teach myself was a, was a hard thing to discipline myself to do because, right. you know, I'm just so used to somebody... Hey, do this. Present it for you, and then you take the material and you do something with it. Yeah, and that, that's another thing you got to ask yourself: Are you the kind of person that is disciplined enough to get on and do your schoolwork, or do you need somebody to kind of make you wear the dunce hat in class and say, "Why didn't you turn this in?" Type right. deal. Because not that that's what we do, but sometimes it takes that extra push, you know. And, and that's why we have schools and things of that nature. And from my experience, you need someone there to break down certain things for you repetitively because if, it, if it's not broken down for you repetitively you're losing it, you, you'll try to figure it out on your own you, you will figure it out eventually but it takes longer to figure it out and then sometimes you misinterpret and then then you misinterpret mm-hmm. and so it's also good to have a different perspective someone just draw it up on the chalkboard and be like let's try it this way and also the advantage of going to school you have 10, 15, 20 other people that you can learn from and you're watching them grow. Yeah, yeah, and, and and I wouldn't even – I would say a silent competition in your mind, but I don't think you should compare yourself with anybody. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you know, you're, you're reaching – I mean, it seems like you're always reaching to get better, and you kind of mentally set yourself a goal. Like, I need my phase to look like that. Sometimes just seeing how something should be presented, especially in the hair, hair, hair world, you know, seeing how a fade looks, a low fade, high fade, mid fade, even though it's not your work – can help you get a good idea and grasp it and, and continue to grow yourself. Because you also have like 10 to 15, 20, even 30 different people who will find a way to make it more easier for them that you can pick their brain and ask them, how did you get your fade like that? Where the instructor might not be able to break it down to you. Because from teaching, I've learned so much from students. I've picked up techniques from students that they've taught me as well. And I've taught them plenty, but I've also picked up little techniques how they went up, how they went how they approached a certain haircut how they approached certain techniques to get it done better for them yeah and i, I learned a lot from the students too uh shout out to kaylee she was showing me how to 
you know, do the manicure. But to some guys, like outside looking in, that would be a joke. But you right. know, we spoke, spoke. Yeah, the man that could do nails. I mean, that's oh, that's, a game that's, changer. that's money right there. So that's a game I, changer. I learn a lot from the students, and, and they and they teach me so much. And, and another thing, you know, um, when you're new to the industry, you're not really knowing your target, your market. Mm-hmm. So most of the time it's based off first impressions of yes. people cutting your hair. So bringing in all different kinds of people means all different kinds of haircuts are coming in. People that want color, people that want blurry face, people that want long scissor cuts. And you can really grow and take out what you want and, you know, what you want to specify in or get better at. And then you could leave the rest. And one thing I was just thinking about as we was talking, the key thing is we follow that. You have to show up. Oh, yeah. What if you're, what are you at apprenticeship or going to school? You have to show up. Because one of the key things for a lot of students is they don't have the the experience is wavered. But you have to look at yourself and see, are you giving your all? Are you showing up every day? Are you ingesting everything possible you need to get to to apply what is being taught? Yeah, I think it should be specified not showing up, but also showing up with the attitude of wanting to learn. Because there's yes. a lot of students that just show up and what they do, right? they sit outside, smoke cigarettes, and put off haircuts and hide so they ain't got to do oh, it. Oh, that's the worst thing. Why would, you, uh, why would you come to somewhere to learn and you're avoiding haircuts? Makes me sick. I don't know why. How are you going to get better? Because uh, some 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 of these students think that, that it's just about cutting hair. It's Cut not. hair and money in your hand. No. That's all it's about. And they're they're willing to sacrifice this time to make mistakes and grow just so they can get to the point to where they can just cut hair and make money. But you're not going to feel satisfaction in that. Cutting hair is the easiest part. Yeah. I, 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 and honestly, um, I don't want to say that I'm tired of cutting hair, but I love that my day is broken up from cutting hair to doing a podcast to going to a school. Like, that's a blessing to me because right. I can, I'm one of those people that easily gets bored <laughs> doing the same thing. I hate to say it, but I do. Right. I do the same thing. And I get bored. I like variety. I like right. I like I like to mix it up. And that's just and thankfully that I can do that. And 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 it's worked out that way. And that's the perspective I didn't even look at it. I, am I just doing that? How we broken up? Mm-hmm. It's probably has given me a lot of life too because I love what I do. It gives me more energy because yeah. I, it just shows me all the different avenues of where. And you know, I got Master Yoda right here telling me, you know, like showing me the different things that could be evolved with and and things in ways that I wouldn't even expect it. Though, like even dealing with mental health, helping people. <sighs> Being mental health advocates, like, would I ever thought that me cutting hair would lead to being a mental health advocate? And 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 something like that right now, I mean, not to say it shouldn't be blown up, but it is being blown up right, right. now. And it should have been to begin with, but now yep. it's becoming, I mean, you watch an NFL game and you got players speaking about it out loud, you know, and, and here right. I am in the middle of it. So. Kind of big commercial. I didn't think of it on that aspect where we are doing so much with our trade and it's not even about cutting hair. But you're a master barber, but we're doing the podcast. We're teaching. We're being mental health, mental health advocates. And then we're still cutting hair also. But that's, I didn't think of it on that aspect where, you know what, you should maybe start thinking of it more than just cutting hair. Because that's the easiest part. And I was listening to that book, shout out Ryan Wade, mm-hmm. the Naval Rod, Rod, Ravenant. Um, he was saying how, n- n- like, you go to college. And he said almost 99% of the stuff you do is wasted. Like, right. and, and I'm not saying that, that it's not for nothing, but, you know, he said once you find out that 1%, that's what you need to dump all your focus in, that right. 1%. When you find out what you want, just just let go, dump it. Because why else, why would you not want to be involved in something that you love and give your 100% to? I, I, I guess that's why I said I don't have bad days. Because <laughs> you love it. And in yeah. the book, too, it says, you know, you, you, you can't compete with me because – you're competing for you. It's work. What looks like work for you yeah. is easy for me. I do this every day. It's it's not work. Yeah. Yes. That makes so much sense. Cause I'm like, people ask me, how are you able to maintain all of this? I'm like, man, this is, this I, I ask you that. <laughs> I, I ask you that. This is what I love to do. Like every time I see you, I'm this like, is, Craig, what are you? <laughs> this is what I love to do. So I'm, I'm not like second nature sitting there thinking like when I have days off, I'm thinking like, man, I can't wait to get back to the shop. Man, I can't wait to get back to school. Man, the podcast is on Monday. I look, I'm excited. Latham was sending me a text. I was like, let me text Emma. What's, what's a good time? I'm excited to just pour into something that has given me so much. And even and there's some people in the industry right now that are in school or apprentice. And um it's it's really hard to see it until you get your license. And right. Because and, and that's and that, and that's an unfortunate thing about it, is when you when you get your license and actually can feel that oh, that breath, you know, to feel like you can actually be your own person and be responsible. Like 
that that is so a reward, such a reward in itself. But they have to see past that just to get to that is an accomplishment. And for me, once I hit that first accomplishment, which I never got a college degree, you know, I didn't I, I wouldn't say I excelled in anything in particular. So when I, I accomplished something and got my license. Some people be like, "Oh, you just got." To For me, that was a big deal. That's an of accomplishment, course, and, and then course. I got addicted to that success. Like I wanted to, I wanted to be more successful. I wanted to feel it again. I wanted to be uncomfortable. Like when I took my practical, I'm sitting there shaking. <laughs> I was shaking, <laughs> but I I love the feeling of 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 making myself better. So one thing I need, I think we need to talk about is like you talked about it a little a little bit, but that time space from you starting to finish it maximize that time. You think that you're not learning, but you're actually learning. You want it all at once and you can't get it all at once. Most students, they want that 10 year of barbering all at once in three months. And, and, and you, and you got, and you all, also, got, I mean, and even with the apprenticeship, you got time. I, if you're an apprentice out here and you cut heads every single day, every hour, more power, to, more power to you. But I, I sat around a whole lot and did a whole lot of nothing, and and and, and there's no reason for that. Because when I went to take my state boards, I had to study, study, study. And I had to rush it because I pushed it to the end. You right. could, if you just study as you Finish go, yourself. exactly. You don't have to wait to the end and dump it all because you'll you'll already have it can't shortcut that process that one month of apprenticeship or that one month of of, of being your, the first month of school being a student you shouldn't beat yourself up and think that you're not going to get it and, and since i got you here how would you approach a student or even apprentice that you feel like is just wasting time do you just you let them you let them you let them you let them do it now at this point because you've done it for so long and you know when people just aren't in it or do you it's 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 hard because i try to look past it because i love the industry so much if someone is given an ounce an ounce of just the thought process of want to be a barber i want them to get i want them to get it so bad even if they just if it, even if they're just showing it's, up it's, even if they're showing up it's hard because i'm my thought process is eventually it'll click eventually it'll click and sometimes it, it does, right? Some and, and sometimes it does. And but just my love for the industry, my love for barbering, my love for people finding their passion, my love for people finding something that they're happy with. Because I know what barbering did for me. I know the joy, the excitement, the love I still have from barbering. And I'm like, if you just give it some time and put something in it, you can experience that same thing. So for the people out there that are kind of like that are listening on the fence, like what would you say to just kind of shake them to get them, get them wake up, man? Like what what would you say to them right now? You're not gonna get out what you don't put in. You have to make it. You have to make it your own. You have to make it your passion. You're not gonna get out what you don't put in, and if you're not going to school every day. You're not passing your tests. You're not going to your apprenticeship every day. You're not trying to do some type of reciprocation of learning yourself. Because learn is not just the teacher every time teaching you. You have to go outside the classroom and try to pick up some things yourself to make it work. So it just frustrates me, man, because I, I just see like, like – like I'm like you, like I want to see it happen, but when I see people just kind of taking it for granted, it, it makes me upset, man. I'm like, you know, because yeah, I'm there, I'm there too, learning. So I'm like, I'm here as well. I'm right beside you, trying to grow, and I'm I'm making the same sacrifices. That it might not seem like that because I got a shirt and tie on, but I'm making the same sacrifices that you're making to be here. I could be somewhere else, you know, doing whatever, but I'm here too. So when I see you wasting time, I just want to be like, ah, you know. Just... And the, and the thing is, is the insecurity of most students. It's an insecurity that they have within themselves thinking, oh, maybe I'm not good. Oh, man, my, my haircut is not looking as good as um, Vic Blends. My haircut is not looking as good as Wands. My haircut is not looking as great as Ryan. My haircut is not as good as Cody and Preston. My haircut is not as good as Micah. Those guys have put time in. Mm -hmm. Those guys study the craft hard. You're not going to outwork Ryan. You're not going to outwork Cody. You're not going to outwork Devon. Those guys study the craft hard for their skill to be where it needs to be. And they're all in. And they're all in. Even like yourself, you've studied the craft hard. You put time in. So for a student to be like, 
man, my haircut's not as good as am I. You've been doing it two months, three months. It's not, you're not, it's, you can't shortcut that process. Take some time. You almost have to be a little pessimistic. Like, the, for, in, a, in my opinion, like, the, gla- the glass is half empty. Because I feel like if I stay like that and I stay humble and I continue to grow, if I say I'm not quite where I need to be, even though you, you, know, thank, thank you give me praises and I appreciate that, I still feel like my glass is, is, is empty. I still need to fill this thing. I so much- well, that's great because the students who I've seen from my experience, from my, from my analytics, because I do analytics for students, I watch them and I grade them and I, over the time since I've had the school, my analytics tells me that the students – who come to school every day, who work extra hard, who understand that it's a it's a learning curve. You can see it in their work. You can see it towards the end. And I love to see like the students ones who pace themselves that are insecure too, that just really insecure about their work. And when they finally start saying, "Hey, look at this," right? Hey, hey, look what I did, man. But, that makes me feel so good because I know you're building that confidence. But that don't you need. beat yourself up and say, "Well, compare yourself and shoot yourself down," and then make. Everybody else learned experience terrible because you're not feeling comfortable with your skills. Mm-hmm. Maybe you're not putting in the time. Maybe as soon as you leave school, you're not putting in that extra effort. Maybe you're not studying the craft like this other person. So why would you just compare just the haircut? It takes more than just the haircut to be a master barber. And I think that's something that everybody has to get over when they first get to school yeah. or, or in an apprenticeship. Because if you do an apprenticeship, you're working in a shop around people that are doing cuts and making money. And in the same time, you know, you see somebody in school doing well and they're doing great cuts and making money. Are you giving 100%? Mm-hmm. If you're comparing yourself to someone who's giving 100% and you're giving 30%, that's not even fair. <laughs> that's not even fair to him or you. No, it's not. And you want them to teach you the skill, but you're not putting in that time like what they did to get acquire that skill. Because it took them 100 hours to get that skill. Now they perfected it. Mm-hmm. And for them to show you and just only put in five hours and think you're going to get that skill, that's impossible. You got to put the reps in. You got to put the reps in. You have to put the same amount of hours or even more from that person who's teaching you. You can't put the minimum amount of reps. You're not going to get nowhere. So I know this is a loaded question because you own a school now, but if you could go back, do you think that you would go to school to do an urgent apprenticeship? Which way would you go? I mean, school 100% because after my apprenticeship, I went to school and I seen the benefits. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I, Do you I feel like you missed out on that much of it? Of course. I mean, of course. So I, I, apprenticeship, then school, then license, and then own school. You know what I mean? I, mm-hmm. I, I, I mean, and for years, I'm like, but, and, but I was good at my craft, but I was a student. I was studious. So I would read, I would do research, but if you're not studious, <laughs> you might, you might as well. I mean, the best route for you is. I'm not gonna say the best route. You you can you determine the best route for you, because what you put in, what you get out, is what you put in. Yeah, plain and simple. Either, Either route, no matter which way you no go. matter which way you go. Mm-hmm. But if you want it a little bit easier, and you want some, you know, you'd go to school. Yeah. I, and I think that's true, 100%. Yeah, but no matter what route you go, you're going to get out what you put in. Yeah. And another thing that I think is good for going to school is the instant networking you get. Oh, oh, yeah. Because you're looking at, like, I mean, how often, how many, how, how often does a new class come to school? The first, we had, a new, we had an orientation there. We had four students this morning. Okay. Justice. And you think about, I mean, Every you might month. run into 20, 100 people, you know, maybe, maybe a third, three-fourths of them continue to stay in the industry. Look how many people you've already networked with in the area. What the activities that, that the schools present, the competition, the um, just the, the learning, the different different um, instructors, different um, continuing education classes that the school presents, different people coming in on a broader scale where you have a group of people who's breaking it down for you and helping you learn, opposed to you by yourself or one or two. Yeah, and 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 you, and you could just go. I feel like if it wasn't for networking and my willingness to go and meet new people and be around mm-hmm. new people, I I wouldn't have half of what I have now or or have achieved or or trying to achieve. 
I wouldn't even have the opportunities that I have now if I wasn't willing to meet and network with people. Right. And when you're doing an apprenticeship, you're almost kind of in a bubble, I feel like, in a way. Um, I mean, I went to a few hair shows here and there, but I was so naive about the industry and the growth of it that, you know, until I went to these hair shows and it really opened my eyes to these people around the world that have done so much with the industry. But I really feel like I was just so focused on getting my license and being somebody in the shop, doing the best I can in the shop. And I just couldn't see the whole picture. Right. I mean, <clears throat> you don't know what you don't know. You know what you know. So when someone is in, telling you, hey, try it this way, it's a reason because they've tried it, <laughs> they've, they've received it, and it's time for them to apply it. They've received it, they've retained it, and then they applied it. So they've given you some information to teach you how to do those things. Why make it difficult on yourself? I think that's one of the coolest things about the industry is that most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time when I have somebody to ask a question or attain some knowledge, not to be nosy or whatever, just try to be cool and talk to people, but just to generally have a question about something, uh, most most hair professionals have been willing to to get back to me and teach me and willing and excited to share their knowledge with me. Most of the time, you know, and it, 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 it's, I think if you really love the industry, then you love to see people grow at the same time. You do. And you can't, you can't underestimate the people, the networking and the students that will go to a school, who will move out of state, who will go to different shops. You, you can't underestimate that group of people that you learn with. When you did your apprenticeship, did you know many other barbers did you ever go to any other shops or no not at all not at all not at all not at all was there was there like a was there like a silent shop beef in the neighborhood um yeah i mean it, it was just i mean it's like 20 years ago you know what I mean? so it's yeah. like I don't know, 17 18 years ago so it was just like it was just like there wasn't much of an industry yeah, then. It, it was the industry wasn't like how it is now. No. You know what I mean? There's, so much has changed. You know what I mean? The barber industry has changed so much where I could look at um certain things and see how a barber could make himself profit profitable. Was there ever like a, did they have hair shows then too? They, they did, but it wasn't something that you talked about. I mean, I, I didn't go to a hair show until I my first hair show I went to was when I opened the school. That's the very first one you went to. Very first one, like twenty twelve. No, twenty um sixteen. Sixteen, and and you didn't go to. Did I you know of any? Did I, you did I, it I ever? I, I I the conversation wasn't like that. So things like that that you miss out on just being in the school. Someone might say, you know, there's a hair show coming up. Someone might say, hey, we going to um San Francisco to meet some barbers. Mm -hmm. Someone might say, hey, we going to this and that. You know, so those things you miss out on in an apprenticeship, mm -hmm. you know, because it's not being talked about that much. They just worry about their day to day grind. Yeah, and... you, you you don't have that um that educator coming in. Did you guys have an educator come in? No, I think we mentioned it. We did go to a few classes and shows, but or something come someone come to the shop. Mm -hmm. No, I no. Except the guy sells scissors. <laughs> Come by these Hanzo. <laughs> Come by these Hanzo. Yeah, you're a apprentice. You're not making bread. Uh -uh. Come, come he said, like, like seven hundred. I said, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so I got these scissors from Walmart. I'm yeah, straight. The CVS got some. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I'm good. Yeah. And it's and people and I and I, that's another thing. Like the school, like when I hear students complain sometimes about how much school costs. But if they really knew the return on investment that they get, oh, it's it's not even close. You can't even touch it. It's, it's not even close. No, no it's, and it's better. Probably the disparity on that is probably better than any other occupation you could ever really have. There's not too many places where the tuition you pay, you will make that back half by half the year, or even before that. And when it, you start working, yeah, I mean, easily. I mean, it, especially if you if you're in school and you're doing it right and you're yes. building a clientele and a name for yourself. When you get out, you should have clientele waiting on you. You're 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 going to make that back easy in the first year, easy times five. Even if a school say a top say twenty five thousand dollars, 
You should be able to pay that back in that first year. That's the school is twenty thousand. Twenty seven. Damn. Twenty eight. <laughs> no, excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's so, a lot. Yeah, twenty. Well, you contradicting yourself? I know. Yeah. I know. I'm contradicting <laughs> myself, but man, yeah. but I mean, you still get it back. I mean, that's right. still cheaper. That's that's one year of college. Right. You know, that's one year of college. That's two semesters of college. You think about people going and just to get a bachelor's in whatever. That's that's you're still it's still going to cut in and you're going to be making money way faster yeah. and making more of it. I mean, it. the average price of a heck is $28, 30 $35. Exactly. And, you, and you know, you, you, when you first start off, you might be doing an hour, 45 minutes of haircut. Right. That's good. That's great money. That's more you can go make working in your nearest factory. Yeah. <clears throat> so, I mean, the, the the reward is and the benefit for the tuition is really you get that back instantly. You get that back instantly. I just think it's the best job in the world, man. And I'm surprised there's not a million barbers. Uh, if it was up to me, everybody in my town would be a barber. Because I didn't tell everybody, it's like, man, hey, how you doing, man? It's like, oh, man, job's getting on my nerves, man. I just can't. And I'm like, oh, you should be a barber, man. It's so great. You should do it. And <laughs> nobody tell, ever listens to me. I mean, I tell people that, too. Because when I tell people, like, since I've opened my the barbershop in 2004, and even before that, I never had a day where I went to the shop I didn't want to. I never had a bad day going to work. In almost 20 years, going to the shop, even when I worked in Boston, it was so fun going to the shop, even when I didn't have haircuts. Did you feel like you're missing something sometimes? Yeah, yeah everybody's it, coming to It was just fun. Out. You're having conversations with people from around the world, around the country, and you're doing a skill that you love. You're making art. You're making art. You have this canvas every 30 minutes is leaving you. And people look like, like look at you like you're a zoo animal because they're like, man, I could never do that. Right. I never... I'd be afraid to even ch chop the edge off somebody's hair. You learn how to use your straight razor and just meticulously and just carve certain things in people's hair without just being preci yeah. precise, using your tools, your trimmers, your edges to do certain things with your hands. And you're like, man, did these hands do this? And I think it's just such a respected profession that people don't understand because, you know, you're cutting people... You know, you got people that are CEOs messaging you asking, hey, when can I get with you? Yes. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like yes, yes, doctors, yes. lawyers, CEO, when when can I get a haircut from you, sir? Yep. You know, and that's people don't understand the kind of weight that that carries. But I mean, it really does. And that's why you should carry yourself ethnically. It's, ma ethically. it's, it's major. I mean, it's um, barbering is a whoo. So today we talked about shout out to again, Feed Spot for ranking as the top 25 podcasts in the country. And in the world, that's a major accomplishment. And again, Barber College Success brought to you by Craig Charles of Crown Cuts Academy, JC Crown Cuts Academy, Bristol and Craig's Crown Cuts, downtown JC, and my co-host. Am I Fields? Am I your barber? Yes, sir. Am I? Tell everybody where you at. You just said Am I Fields? I you do. Talk about that wonderful city of yours, <laughs> man. I'm from Virginia. If yeah. you know, it's on the map. You watch the weather station sometimes, they bring us up. You know what I'm saying? We're here at By the Blade Barbershop, Marion, Virginia. Uh, am I your barber on Instagram? A M M I your barber. Just hit me yeah. up, man. You make an appointment. Just come holler at me. I've, I feel free to, if you want, if you're a student and you just want to stop by and say, What's up? I have a I've, I've actually spoken to a lot of younger students in high school here recently that really? people that are passionate about cutting hair and they're 14, 15 years old. You no, know, well, let's set up a field trip. This lady just called me today. want to set up a field trip on Wednesday in Bristol from what? some alternative school in Kingsport. So I have to meet her there on Wednesday. Let's do it. So if you have some kids you want to set up a field trip to the school, we'll bring them up maybe, you know what I mean? And set something up. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Like just, okay. Um, you said it's a field. We we'll talk about it later. We can finish it. Yeah, I mean, it's part of the podcast. Yeah, we talk. people know that our industry is love. Man. Yeah, we and and we're and more than happy to reciprocate it. And, and at the, I mean, at the sake of our time, because we yeah. just love it so much. I mean, yes, sir. I mean, I remember I was talking to Craig the other day. I was like, it was late. It was like seven. I'm like, Craig, what are you about to do? He said, I'm about to go do a haircut. I'm like. <laughs> What you charging this man? He said, "I'm gonna do it for free." I said, "What? <laughs> Seven o'clock on a on a on a sat Sunday? You gonna do a free haircut?" I mean, but when you 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 get you get more back because there's a conversation with the guy, and you're sitting there, he's getting to see him. That 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 was payment for me. That was fruitful for me. And at the same, it's funny because we were at the the art exhibit, and I asked the guy a question. And he said, I think I know you. I think you used to cut my hair talking to Craig. And I was like, look at that. <laughs> hey, man, this, this thing crossed boundaries and bridges, gaps. and it, it, Generations. It, generation. It just, from the mountaintop to the bottom of the top, you know, get there, be square, and be there. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, barbering is love. I, I, I just can't speak enough for it. And it's just, if I could just go to, I don't know. 
I don't know what I want to say. I just love the industry. I feel you, man. Yeah. I just wish everybody would get at least start with their license and, and reach this this point of enlightenment that I feel like I feel in life right now. You know, not to say I don't deal with problems like everybody else or have good days and bad days. I, I but I just feel so much more at peace with myself in this industry. And, but, I, and understand, there's a learning curve. Don't beat yourself up. There's a learning curve. You have to learn. There's a learning curve. This is an acquired skill. This is a learned skill. So when you get into it, whether it be an apprenticeship or you're going to school, there is a learning curve. An order to the universe, as you say. There's an order to the universe. You have to learn it. You're not going to be the best barber during that time of learning. You shouldn't expect to be the best barber. And don't compare yourself to barbers who are in the shop. Don't compare yourself. Tell the barbers who on t- tele- on Instagram or Facebook. Go to the bookstore and pick the book up and read the back of it and yeah. know what the whole book says. Just, just say one day I, I aspire to get there. And you put in the work, you will get there. Because after a while, five years in the game, your fate is going to look just as good as mine. And and even Craig Charles, at, at where he's at, <laughs> he still had to go one day at a time. He didn't get to go faster, yeah. no slower. He still had to go one day at a time. All our haircuts, all our fades are going to look the same. Market Street here didn't get built over over one day. It took one day at a time. So. Oh, oh yeah. Shout out to Lathan again. I mean, I remember the, when I called Lathan to say, Lathan, uh, I see you got a podcast. What do I got to do to come on? He's just come down. <laughs> 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 yeah, I was like, I'm coming. This looks fun. <laughs> and it's been over. And it's during the pandemic, too. <laughs> it's like. It's been over a year, so I mean, I was thinking about how long I've been on the show. I was trying to think, I couldn't remember, maybe April or something like that. Hey, man, you, you're a legend now. Okay, I don't know. I guess, yeah. I guess we have to make some apparel, man. So, we do, you do need it. I mean, we got a podcast. Yeah. Like, Call it success I like apparel. the logo a lot. Yeah, we gotta make some apparel. Yeah, look, we got the we got the we got the plug right there. Yeah. Lathan got the hat, I got the hat on right now. Yeah, we gotta do something. BCS. Some of it probably sue us thinking we're national football game championship. <laughs> Barbara Cause success. Yeah. You we know, can do, yeah, we can start a team like that one dude did. And <laughs> we can start a football team. You know what I'm talking about? What, what? There's a guy in the news that just started a football team and it was just like random dudes. They were like, they weren't even really in school and they was just like between the ages of like 18 to 30. He got a football league? He put, they had it on ESPN. They had a game on ESPN. And they played IMG and they lost like 64 to nothing and they yeah and they found out they just put yeah, deep yeah, 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 yeah. Barbara, who trying to be on the barber college success football team we might, think stop, we might start with a softball team first there we go a, a we can have a school there you go school yeah. softball team you know what we're looking to we're, there you go have yep. have different schools play different schools yeah we'll, we'll look into that man this was a this was a dope episode i think so yeah it's the first time it's just me me and you really just I mean, monologuing but sometimes or dialoguing. You, you need that you know what i mean i was thinking about it i was like man i'm gonna throw in my curve this weekend but we i mean we just just talk and have so much content and every time we speak we like podcasts every yeah. podcast, every podcast. Yeah, i mean yeah i mean so you you gotta come up with somebody that's too not am i no well, i'm okay I, whenever you want to whenever you want me to to throw something in yeah, i'll, throw, I'll well, figure something well, out well come up with the next episode next week oh next man <laughs> i should have knew better later what i say so <laughs> I, I forgot who i was dealing with <laughs> the, the next two episodes on you oh man y'all hear that yeah. y'all tune in i'm yeah. gonna have to and you, can, and you can bring your guests bring that guy you're talking about yeah i'll bring my bring eric mefford yeah Yes, sir. Yeah, that, that, that'll be dope. His uh, Instagram name is the Wizard Barber, and the reason is, is that is because uh, where we're at in Marion, it, the Appalachian Trail cuts through. So a okay. lot of people walk up in the Appalachian Trail, and they all got trail names, right? They got you know random reasons. Like one dude carried a loofah, and they called him SpongeBob. So random <laughs> reasons, and he came in to get a haircut, and a guy's like, "Man, you're." You're a wizard with those clippers. He's like, you should be the wizard barber. And then, <laughs> boom, that was it. Yeah. Hey. Wow. So, so you guys right on the Appalachian Trail up there? It's it's the Appalachian Trail runs through there on the. So they got this little app, and it and it lets them know where they can go, see find hotel rooms, get some food, and Service. go in for stuff. Yeah, stuff like that. And Marion falls on that app. So there's during the summertime, mm. there's a lot of people hiking it. Man. I seen. You remember that? Was you that that's a dude down there like a couple of weeks ago asking where's the where to the Appalachian Trail downtown Johnson City? I'm he like, lost, ain't he? Yeah. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, man, I don't know, man. Because I, I, I ain't enough to point to east, west, north, and south. I was like, man, he, he asked you. Yeah, I said the bus station is down there. <laughs> <laughs> Greg said, "Well, you need a subway. What uh, is it? <laughs> uh, the bus station down there? They'll probably know." So, but again, man, Barbara Cars success brought to you by Craig Charles of Crown Cuts JC. Crown Cuts Bristol, Crown Cuts Downtown, JC. 
Um, hit us up, man. We uh, enroll students once a month at the Barber School in Johnson City and likewise in Bristol. We offer financial aid. We also offer the GI Bill. If any veterans out there would like to check us out, come to the school, come change your career, hit us up. Let us know what you're about. We'll give you a career change. We'll give you advice. We'll put you on a path to becoming a master barber. I can't tell you enough what Barbara has done for me. I know I'll do the same for you. Um, what are your lasting words, am I, before we close this episode? I know it didn't seem like we was on it even that long. It's been an hour. No, we've been chilling. Yeah. So, I mean, just come. I, I just do it, man. Like, enjoy the journey. I mean, yeah. I mean, what what can I say? Make I mean, you just got to feel it, man. Feel it for yourself. Don't beat yourself up. It's a learning curve. You're going to grow. It may seem that you're not on track, but you have 12 months to complete a 15-month course. Month one, you confuse. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what information. Month two, you get in the grasp of certain terminology and certain things. And that time you get the clippers in your hand, you start cutting. Mm-hmm. You've done all these <clears throat> practicals, all these things that you seem like deemed not important. Month four, three and four, you kind of get a little bit of independence, but you still and sure what it is, you're getting some setbacks, you think your, your haircut looks good, then someone starts laughing or something, that gives you, breaks your confidence. Month five, you're getting, you're getting some momentum and you're getting more comfortable identifying different haircuts, different hairstyles. Month six, seven, a little bit more independence come in and you can go on your own and you start feeling good about yourself and then you might get a step back, a setback because you didn't break a line or you didn't do something good, you look in the picture, but it's okay, you're on track. Month eight, nine, that's when you start really getting to your groove. Mm-hmm. You settle and you understand it's the bottom of the mountain. You're going down and school is getting ready to be over with for you. You're getting ready to graduate. And then month 10, 11, 12, around that time, you graduate, you get out there. And it's okay to not be the best barber right there. The basic thing that you have to get down pat when you graduate, sanitation, consultation, knowing how to reach clients. Knowing how to be the best person possible, thinking about punctuality, all those things. The haircut is going to come because when you get in the shop, it's going to be a learning curve. People are not going to trust you. <laughs> I had a true story real quick. Uh, my friend wanted me to book him an appointment. I said, just use the app. He's like, ah, he's like, I don't need to use the app. He said, I've been with you since day one, which is true. He's been, I've been with you since day one, man. He's like, you cut me with a razor. I was like, she we don't mean nothing. I cut somebody the other day. <laughs> so I still make mistakes. Right. I still make mistakes. Yeah. And you're going to make them. Yeah. And I understand that. It's okay. It is okay. There's a learning curve. There's a big learning curve. You, you can't short shortcut that month, that first month in the barbershop after you graduate. You can't shortcut that first six months. You can't shortcut that first year. You're going to learn something that first year that you did totally didn't learn in school. And it's going to be okay. I mean, I talk to barbers all the time who are five, six months out of school. They're like, man, I didn't realize how much pressure I put on myself when I was in school. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize how much pressure I put on myself. Even some barbers who are two years out, they're like, man, why did I do that to myself? So I say that to say this. Students, relax. It's okay. The haircut is going to come. Work on the things that you're not good at. Work on your weaknesses. Don't work on your strengths. Because you just keep working your strengths, when you get in the shop, it's going to be difficult to learn how to do a design. You can't practice and try to do a design in the shop now. Work on those skills. Work on, during the dead time when you have in school. Hey, pick something up. The dead time when you have an apprenticeship, work on something. Pick up a mannequin. Pick up your shares and just start cutting. And even if you're sitting around doing nothing, the day's going to keep coming no matter what. Yeah. So you might as well make something out of it. Make something out of it. It's important. Again, Barbara College Success. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you for all our sponsors. Our sponsors, um, Colossal Brand. Um, the syrup lady came by last week. Again, shout out to her. Uh, hit her up for the elderberry. She has some great things going on. Um, again, thank you. We have another banging episode next week. Next week, Mr. Amma, he said he's going to come up with the content. So I'm going to talk to one of the kids from Bristol, students excuse me, students from Bristol to come in. Okay. Hey, if you can do that, that'd be great. Yeah, we're gonna we do got that. two spots. I'm going to leave that to you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Again. Barber College success.
Barber College success. Barber College success.